Now, as we mentioned, after weeks of speculation, Labor's tax policy will be unveiled this afternoon. Leader Phil Goff says the decisions will be bold and will enable the country to pay off debt. But after being described as one of the worst kept political secrets, today's announcement isn't likely to throw up too many surprises. Joining me now with some of the details is political editor Duncan Garner. Morning, Duncan. Good yeah, Rachel. So what's Phil Goff going to reveal today then? It has been the worst uh, kept secret around, really. So what you're going to get is a 15% <clears throat> blanket capital gains tax on things like investment properties, which also includes uh, the family batch or the family, you know, the second family house, uh, if you like. 15% uh, uh, tax also on sh uh, sale of shares, businesses, farms, and there will also be a, um, a new top rate of tax come in at 39 cents uh, for top income earners. And my understanding is it'll be on about 120, 130 thousand dollars. So uh, a pretty comprehensive package from Labor. You can't argue. Uh, today uh, that Labor doesn't stand for anything, you're going to be able to see a pretty clear and bold and pretty brave plan from the Labor Party actually that this is what they stand for and it'll be very different uh, to what National and the Government stands for. Well John Key's been pretty quick to say that Goff's policy actually simplifies the election because uh, if you want to pay less tax, he says vote National, if you want to pay more vote Labor. Is it right? Is, is tax going to be the defining issue? <laughs> Well, it'll be one of the issues, but I mean, John Key, of course, would love it to be the defining issue, and he would love uh, for that line to stick that under national you pay less tax and uh, under, uh, un, un, under uh, Labor you'll pay more. I mean, Key would love that to stick, but it's probably not true, to be honest. I mean, if you look at Labor's policy today, it is going to target uh, the wealthy. I'm not talking high income earners, I'm talking the very wealthy, asset rich uh, New Zealanders who, for a number of years, uh, have been able to put their money into housing and perhaps an unproductive uh, part of the New Zealand economy economy like housing and get away with not paying uh, any tax on the profit. So if you're a very, very wealthy New Zealander, then Labor's coming after you. If you're a high income earning New Zealander, uh, then Labor's also coming after you at that, at that top end. Uh, but Labor's also going to give $10 a week tax cut to every worker as well by making the first uh, $5,000 of income tax free. So it's not entirely true, uh, that statement from Key, that you know, under National you'll pay less and under Labor you'll pay more. Not entirely true, but Key, boy, would he love it to stick. Labor has done some polling uh, on this issue. Uh, the capital gains tax isn't overwhelmingly popular, but then neither is National's asset sales plan, is it? No, the battle of the two terrible ideas potentially uh, <laughs> for the New Zealand public. I mean, 43% in this Labour Party poll of 750 people disapproved uh, of the capital gains tax, but it was more than 50% disapproved uh, of the National Party plan to partially privatise state assets. So you've got these two ideas. I mean, the elections now come down to these two defining ideas. Vote for National and you'll partially privatise the big power companies and you'll make about 5 to $7 billion <coughs> and pay off some debt in the, in the long term. Uh, under Labour, well, I've explained what you Get today, you'll get this capital gains tax on the on wealthy New Zealanders and a higher income. So that those those are the two the battle lines have been drawn. Those are the two issues now. New Zealanders need to decide which one's more attractive for you. Another story dominating politics this week, Duncan, has been the fate of the Sri Lankan asylum seekers. John Key says they're not welcome. He's using terms such as queue jumpers. Could this situation here escalate and become the massive political issue it is in Australia? If we were about 4,000 kilometres as a country to the northwest, yes. Uh, but the problem is that boat is about 7,000 kilometres away and there's probably about uh, 7,000 stops on the way uh, to New Zealand. A boat's never come to New Zealand, let's be, uh, let's be clear about that. Now, Key says uh, that he's had intelligence briefings that says, you know, potentially this, this boat could come. Now, we rang Helen Clark in New York yesterday because she's been subject to these same briefings as Prime Minister over the years as well. And her position was that you have got to be kidding me. These boats uh, are so far from New Zealand, they're not that seaworthy. And uh, quite frankly, they won't get to New Zealand ever because of this so many stops on the way and they're not seaworthy. Uh, good politics from Key though, uh, if you think about it. Uh, he's telling New Zealanders that this is your home, not theirs, and uh, he's closing the door. And of course Amnesty and all those uh, groups are going to cry foul. Good politics from Key, although probably not entirely truthful either because as we know this boat is so far away. You also know it's an election year because the old uh, race debates fled again. Peter Sharples and Don Brash debating on Māori TV. They say they can still work together. How can that be? Well, they can work together because it is national that is likely to form the next government. And they put their hand out and say, right, we want coalition partners on the left and coalition partners on the right. So a parallel track. So Key can look to the eight party and say, right, I want to pass this legislation. The Māori Party doesn't support it, so you do. And vice versa, he wants to pass legislation on the left. The ACT Party doesn't want to do it, so he works with them. At the end of the day, both those two parties want to be in or near the cabinet uh, making, you know, decision-making process. They want the limos, they want the jobs, they want the power, they want the budget. So that means 
is they have to work with key. They don't have to work with each other, they have to work through key. So that's why, under MMP, that they're not ruling each other out because they want to stay in government for the long term. Now, I think Hack's going to be struggling uh, to even be in Parliament uh, with the way it's going. It's been a pretty uh, horrific week for them, and you've got to wonder, uh, with Brash's tactics this week, it looks uh, almost a bit lame and a bit sick, and he just should be focusing on the economy. This guy's an expert on the economy. There's capital gains tax debate today and income tax debate today. Where the hell is Don Brash on those issues? Uh, the Greens have been polling particularly well. Is it likely they will stay alongside Labour? Oh, most definitely. I mean, we had them at 9.1% uh, on Sunday night in the three news read research poll. That's the highest we've had them at. I looked at all our polls. It's the highest we've ever had them at. That would give them about 12, 13 uh, MPs, the highest ever. The problem for the Greens is that they need to turn those people out on election day. What I find with the Greens, they poll well in our polls going into the uh, election, but never quite get uh, the numbers on election day. They are most definitely a Labour Party coalition partner. Uh, if you talk to Matedia Tude and Russell Norman, Matedia Tude as a co-leader is not that keen on being in Cabinet. Russell Norm is absolutely keen, said to us in the weekend he'd like to be Associate Finance Minister at the very least. Perhaps he could be in charge of bringing the capital gains tax in on wealthy New Zealanders. Now there's a popular idea, isn't it? Absolutely. All right, Duncan Garner, thanks for your analysis this morning. No worries.